Hi everybody, it's great to be back here again on Eat of My Wow, we're back. Lay and I were away for three weeks in Gullis, in the exile, but it was very important. It was definitely a very, very special three weeks where we were hosted by the most amazing people from anywhere from Denver, Colorado, to Oklahoma City, to Seattle, Washington, to Tacoma, Washington, through our travelings to New York City and the area. So we really, well, we really got around and it was very, very special. And really just being with our dear friends and talking about the land of Israel, we have the special blessing to bring the message of the land to the world, which is always so, so special to be representatives of this very special place, Itamar, and of course the land of Israel as a whole. Um, this lesson I want to dedicate to a friend, and not just a couple of small two words about this friend. Um, right before we went to our trip in America, we had this amazing photographer, very, very special man, a man whose heart is so big, you can actually see his heart through his skin. That's how big and warm his heart is. And I won't say his last name, I guess, to protect his privacy and whatever it is. His first name is George, and he's a very special man. And um, it was love at first sight. We met him here on Itama, and he's... My wife and I, Leah, really, really cherish this person, and this class is going to be dedicated to this amazing individual and um, his family, his beautiful family. We never met them. We met him, but we were now trip here in New York. We met his, his studio in the city, his beautiful studio he has. So, George, this class is dedicated to you. I hope you enjoy it. Well, let's begin. First of all, it is so amazing that when we made our schedule to go to the States, we had no idea that we'd be returning to the land on this week's portion. Now, how does this week's portion open up? Vayaki tovo el It will come to be when you will come to the land. And our rabbis teach us, Vihaya is, the, is, when it comes to be, is always a sign of rejoicement. Because when you come to the land, there is nothing more rejoicing in it that brings more happiness and the experience of returning to the land of Israel. And that's what the Haya Kitavo Alat. And yes, it is. I feel amazing. Here I am, still jet lagged out, and uh, doing this movie here on a different floor of our home. Usually I do it in my office, but here I'm doing it over here. My office meaning my side room to my bedroom. <laughs> and here we are doing it in our living room. So to make a little change of pace and let my wife get over jet lag. Let's get down to this lesson. George, I know you're waiting for it. Well, it's amazing when you think about it. What is this law that the Torah talks about in the sixth portion? When you come to the land of Israel, and you will have first fruits. First fruits, we say in Hebrew, are bikurim. You will take these four first fruits, and you have to bring it to the temple, to bring it to the, to the Kohen at that time. What are these four first fruits all about? And what does that have to do with entering the land of Israel? Well, first of all, this is one of the commandments, one of the laws of the Torah that we say are dependent upon the land of Israel, which means as long as we as a nation of Israel are without the land, we're not inside the land of Israel, we can't fulfill this beautiful commandment of bringing our first fruits to the temple. Now, so that's number one. It depends, it's a law that is dependent upon the land of Israel. Number two, what is the deep meaning behind it? What, is, what do we have to bring first fruits to Hashem? Well, we read about it, it it's all has to do with, I mentioned before, appreciation. Understanding, always looking ahead and saying to Hashem, wow, we thank you so much for what you've given us. Life is so hard sometimes, with so many difficulties, so many challenges, and we thank you all the time and always remember your greatness, what you've done for us. You've done amazing things for your people, and you do amazing things for everybody. And we always have to be thankful to God for what he does for us. And that's what it's all about. Let's read these verses and... We'll try to delve in a little deeper. And they go like this, Vayaki tavo ala aretz, when you come to the land of Israel, Asher Hashem elokecha noten lecha nachala, which God gives you as an inheritance. Vyashavta ba, and you will settle the land. It's not only coming to the land of Israel, but it's settling the land, to live in the land. Vilakachta, and you will take merishit kol pori adama, from the first fruits of your land. Asher tavi me'artzacha, which you bring from your land which God has given you, and you place them in the basket. You must put these fruits inside a basket. And you will go to the place where God will choose. 
or choose, which is, of course, the holy temple. And you go to that place. Uvat el and you will come to the high priest, the priest at that time. And you will say to him, Bat el I came to the land, Asher nishba Hashem lavoteinu l'tetna, which God has sworn to give to our forefathers. V'lachkacha kohen etel miyadecha, and the priest will take the basket from your hands, and he'll place it aside the altar, and you will say, etc., etc. And then you will go through a certain a portion. You will talk about how what, what, when home we were in Egypt and how now we are free in the land of Israel. Well, if we think about it, again, what is the deep thing behind this whole mitzvah? A lot of times in our lives, when things are going good for all of us, it's very easy to forget where our wonderful bounty comes from. Because when a person has so much in his, and his stomach is, is full and content, he usually forgets his Creator, he forgets Hashem who has given it to us. It's a, natural, it's a natural response. When people have everything, they don't realize they're missing anything. They don't realize where it comes from. And it's very, when a person, a person could pray only when he feels that there's a need, that there's a vacuum within his heart, that he has to pray for something that he's missing. That's why it's so hard for us sometimes to pray when we, everything is going well in our lives. When things are turned upside down and topsy and turbsy, and then people begin to pray, wow, I need this, I need that. I'm in distress, I'm suffering. And then prayer comes about. But the, the beauty of, of the mitzvot, of doing Hashem's commandments, 613 commandments that He commanded His nation to do, is that we're always, all the time, reminding ourselves, every moment of the day, that Hashem is behind all our wonderful wonderful happiness and gift of life. And everything that's about it, every, every wonderful thing that we have, Hashem is behind it. He's the one who's giving us this precious, 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 precious gift of life. And by doing our, the commandments again, we are recognizing, it, recognizing this wonderful commandment. And therefore, this wonderful gift, and therefore everything we eat, we make a blessing before we eat. To remind us who, who gave us that wonderful food that we're eating. Or other things that we bless upon. And here we come to the land after leaving Egypt. God, and we were suffering as slaves in Egypt. And here God has given us the land of Israel. So the first natural response a person finally has his own freedom. He has his own trees. Wow, the most beautiful choice fruit he has growing on his trees. What is he going to do with those trees? Well, he'll probably, what is he going to do with those fruit that grow on those trees there? He's probably going to take them for himself and enjoy it. And I think about Hashem. So the... So the commandment is, no, those f the first fruit on our trees, we're not going to worry about our egos and want those first, take it for ourselves. But the most beautiful fruit on our trees, those first fruits, as we call them, will be taken and brought to the temple, placed beside the altar as a gift. As a gift. A gift to show that we appreciate everything that Hashem does for us and gives us. And only after we worry about ourselves. But our whole lives will be centered around appreci appreciating Hashem, appreciating our Creator that has given us life. It's, that's, that's appreciation. This whole world I mentioned this many times. The entire Torah, this is one of the threads that connect the entire Torah together. Understanding, appreciation, appreciating every moment that we have on this earth. Right now, the world is in a total uproar. Total uproar. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and with the financial crisis in this country and that country collapsing. Terrible, terrible weather changes and, and natural disasters throughout the world. And everything is really happening to try to make the world realize that there's someone above us. There's someone above us that is, is really wants us to, to find him and to be connected to him. And that's Hashem. And sometimes he has to bring difficult things upon the world only to wake us up, to bring us closer to him, because there's nothing that is important in this existence more than the connection with Hashem. Once everything we do in our lives is built upon that connection with Hashem, the world will be an amazing place. There will be world peace. There will be a world full of goodness. All the difficulty comes and stems only from the fact that we forget who Hashem is. The nation of Israel, the land of Israel, is God's land, it's God's land that He chose for the Jewish nation. 
to lead the world to this understanding of the concept of goodness of God in the world. Some people come up with all kinds of theories of what's causing the world crisis now, and that theory, and this conspiracy, and that conspiracy, this is happening. But we must realize and not forget that in truth, everything is centered around the land of Israel. That is the center of the world. How Israel is being treated, how Israel is thriving and prospering, will, in, will give an indication to the world where we all stand. Therefore, we must strengthen Israel, we must be with Israel, protect Israel, because it will only be a true blessing upon the world. And those who come against Israel are going to cause more destruction and more suffering upon the world. Until this message is, is understood, the world's going to have to go through a lot, a lot of trouble, a lot of difficulty. And that's what this, this is all about these days and this, this time. It's such a special time when so many people are waking up and saying, wow, Israel is special. We've got to stand with Israel. This has never happened before. Thousands of years this didn't happen. It's happening now. Of course, on the other hand, there's those who are standing against us. Look what's going on to Israel. Look how we've been treated. Look what's going on the way after. What, the whole story with, with the whole famous flotilla in, in, from Turkey. And they're asking us to make an apology after what they did to us. How dare they do that? How dare they're the ones supposed to apologize? But it's so, if the world should be standing up on, on, and yelling, stop this madness to the Turkish people. But no, it doesn't work that way, apparently. Again, Syria is killing its people. Look what's going on in Libya. The world is going crazy. But Israel is always to blame for everything. Right now, again, it's a, it's a war between what's good and, and what's wrong, good and evil. And we must stand with Israel and we will all be blessed. Please stand with Israel. Well, it's been great to be back. I can go on. There's so much I have to say about so many things, about this wonderful trip we had, about what's going on. But let this be an introduction to our return home to the land of Israel. And we'll definitely get back to you next week with a lot more messages and beautiful Torahs. So have a wonderful Shabbat. I miss you all. Shabbat Shalom.